Welcome to the 10th episode of Gospel Open Data Science. I'm your host, Mark G. Bilby. Uh, the latest news is that Marcus Vincent, as of a few days ago, has submitted his uh, finalized version of Marcian's Apostolos to uh, the publisher, uh, Nar Franca Attempto Verlag, in this case. And uh, Marcus and I are collaborating, I think, together with Lance on uh, submitting data sets to the Journal of Open Humanities data again. Um, these are data sets that were created more than a year ago um, when Marcus was, um, you know, through sort of stage one of his um, reconstruction process, but still spent the last year doing extensive refinements and morphological analysis um, as part of that. So these data sets going back a year helped a lot in the process of the reconstruction where he, Marcus and Lance and I could all run analyses of morphological patterns uh, and morphosyntactical patterns, often involving bigrams or trigrams or, you know, just certain morphological forms. And um, that helped Marcus in the process of refining his edition more and more so that it uh, separate out the voices, as it were, between um, the Marcionite text and the uh, canonical redaction. So, um, but now Marcus is fi finished with his refinements. He's going to be, uh, he's already submitted this to the publisher. Um, I gave him some feedback just yesterday on things that I found as I was uh, combing through the data sets carefully. And um, so I now I'm now revising the data sets and then uh, Marcus and I will be submitting these to the Journal of Open Humanities data probably in the next couple of days and likely um, archiving it openly so that people can uh, start to use the data right away if they would like to and would be welcome then also to give us feedback on uh, any any problems or errors with the data. So, um, but I thought again, in the interest of open science and transparency and research methods and code and data that I would open up the box a little bit and uh, show the process of uh, refinement and uh, aligning the data sets. This is similar to things I presented on the last few episodes, but now this is you know live data that's about to go um, to the to the Journal of Open Humanities data for the first time. So um, gives you a sense of like the re, you know the, what the research looks like like up to the minute. And I've already made it through about first Corinthians 14. So this is Marcus's submitted version in the top left. And um, I use that as the basis to create uh, XML uh, this time. So it's a, it's a Perseus project compliant XML file or digital edition. And that's essentially the text here in column G. Uh, column H is a simple transcription. And then columns I, J, and K are Bible works Greek morphology tagged text, uh, one that combines the lemma and the part of speech tag. And then uh, the other two columns separate those out. So. Um, Previously with the Journal of Open Humanities data, we just submitted text versions and um, and Bible works Greek morphology versions. We didn't do an XML uh, Perseus compliant version. So this time we're going to include that as well. So it'll make it more accessible, uh, you know, maybe maybe through the Perseus project if we're able to uh, get that collaboration going um, or, or in other, other platforms as well. And then we'll also be combining all of these into uh, a CSV so that um, it allows for deeper analysis. But again, this is part of our alignment process. Again, I've, in practice, I've just found that aligning the data sets, joining them together, binding them together is one of the best ways of doing quality control in the data because inevitably there's going to be you know, a missing word here or there. There's going to be an extra word here or there, a missing verse, uh, an extra verse, and so on. So this this helps me you know, really like with a fine tooth comb, um, make sure that um, the data sets are are in alignment with each other and in alignment with uh, Marcus's text um, in this latest revision. So I mentioned I'm up to about 1 Corinthians 14 now. So I'm just going to, um, I'll narrate a little bit at the start, uh, but this will probably start to get repetitive. So I may just go silent um, later in the, in the episode. But uh, let's just start out here in 1 Corinthians 14. We're just looking for the next misalignment in the data and let's see we're at 1425 we're good we look good at 14 uh 15 uh 1a i may just check the verse numbering here real quick to make sure and i have the files open yeah 15 1 in 
here I used A and 3B. I think I'm just standardizing to uh, like, um, well, let's see what the verse numbering situation is here. First Corinthians one. So it must be just in the XML file that I have these um, A and B references. I'm just gonna go ahead and take those out uh, just to make it simpler instead of trying to do internal verse divisions. So that'll take care of that um, on my next pass through the data. But I'm also just gonna look for the next word alignment issue here. Okay, do we, there's something coming up right, right around here. We're in alignment there, and then suddenly we got alignment here. So there's an extra gar. It's a conjunction. Uh, Marcus filtered out quite a few of those um, as inconsistent with uh, the style of the Marcionite text. So I need to go find gar in, it looks like in this case, it's just in the Bibleworks Greek morphology version where the XML and the, the text transcription align. So let me go delete the gar from 1 Corinthians 15.21. Fifteen twenty one. There it is, Gar. So it's just a just one word, but that's enough to throw all the data sets out of alignment. And so that's saved now. So I'm saving them down here in a supplemental folder, and then this is kind of the project folder up here. So each time I revise them, I copy them up, and then can get rid of that. And then we can rerun. This is a just a ver same, you know, a modified version of the same script uh, scripts that I was using before. Kind of a, a pipeline that does a uh, parsing of the XML data, parsing of the CSV or the uh, text, the two text files, and then joins them together. And you can see we're pretty close to alignment already in the overall numbers. About 6,400 tokens in the main text transcription. A little over 6,400. Uh, so five five tokens apart, it looks like, com uh, comparing the text transcription, the Bible works edition. And then because the XML includes a bunch of punctuation, that's not in the um, not in the other editions. It's considerably larger. So, uh, but all all three will eventually be in alignment. Let's see. Uh, okay, so it's finished with the latest routine. I'm going to just delete that or close that. Open this back up. All right. So I think we were around 1 Corinthians 14. All right, it's looking good now. I think those, yeah, 15, 1, and 3, that's taken care of now, those uh, extra verse identifiers. Got a little punctuation mark here hanging out with uh, with one of the words. That's interesting. That usually doesn't happen. I need. I might need to go check the code as to why that's happening. On the other hand, it's not probably that big of a deal again because we have multiple versions of the of the word. Um, let's see. What is our next misalignment? Okay, we got another one. Okay, Ekron Hosper N. Okay, we have another gar at fifteen twenty two. So I need to go delete that. 15.22, God, it should be right at the start of the verse. And it's in the, the Bible works version. 15.22, Gar, right there. All right, that one's done. I'll copy it back up. Rerun the pipe. The joining process takes a little bit of time, but it's not too bad.
you can go check that Goddard in 15. Yeah, no Gar there in Marcus's edition. All right, here's the latest. So this is essentially what I, you know, have been doing, um, you know, just repeatedly. I think probably been through about 40 or 50 cycles just this morning. Um, and I'll just continue to keep doing it until it gets in alignment. Um, let's see. 1421. Okay, we're out of alignment again. Get over my egg ball. Okay. That here the gar was the gar. All right, then we have Adam. And then we have oh, we have a pass. So Mark has probably removed that. That's 1522. Oh, we need to go to 15, chapter 15. 1522. Yep. Hosperento Adam, Apathnes Kusin. So it's as an Adam, they died rather than all died, so that the all uh, is being, uh, Marcus has filtered it out as not part of the Marcionite version. First Corinthians 15 is actually very extensively attested uh, for the Marcionite text. It's one of the most thickly attested. Like this, this most of this chapter was there, um, but the pas is a that that sort of a, it's a feature of exaggeration or hyperbole or universalization that um, that is part of the canonical redaction and not part of the Marcionite text. So let's go fill let's find that and filter that out. And again, it's just this will just be in the Bible Works version because it's not it's not there in the other ones. Uh, let's see. Can get rid of well. All right, fifteen twenty two. Pass. Here we go. Hosper in toadam apathneskusin. All right, that is done. Saved. Now I take from the bottom here, copy it up once more, close out the spreadsheets, rerun the pipe. That one's done, part two, now I can go with this. This takes probably about 30 seconds. Sometimes I take little breaks while the machine is working. All right, I'll narrate through pass number three and then I'll just go silent for the rest of the time. So again, like I don't expect everybody to watch every every second of this, but uh, in the interest of uh, like open science and transparency, I wanted to show the process. Okay, we were at 15, 1521, was it? Hosper en todama pathneskusen. Okay, so the pass is now gone. That's good. And now we can go move along to the next one. Okay. Okay, this looks like a bigger problem here. We have a toteo hatan. The hatan is there, but the toteo. That was probably an insertion. Uh, the kingdom to God. So it looks like Marcus inserted that in verse 24. Here we go. Hatan ten to theo. When he gives the kingdom over to God. Um, so the to God was not in his earlier reconstruction, but he added it. And then that's not reflected in the Bible works Greek morphology. So I'm going to open up my Bible Works program and just grab that pre that string because it's already well tagged. I often do this to patch. So again, we're in 1524. 
four. We need to add doceo, hatan paradido, ten vaseleon, doceo. Hatan paradido, ten vaseleon, doceo, right here. So I don't know if you can see that. It's dense, but the doceo just got inserted right here. All right, so again, gonna copy that over. This is kind of what I talked about before of human in the loop joining and cleaning. Uh, you know, these are these would be difficult things for a, a machine uh, algorithm to find and parse and patch uh, all on its own, uh, maybe in the future. But right now in terms of getting uh, really clean, high quality data, it takes, uh, you know, these kinds of expert human interventions um, in the process. So let's see, I think I just copied it over. We're good. Run it. Let's do a little quick check on where we're at now in the process. Still five tokens apart in the, the transcription and BibleWorks Greek morphology data sets. No, we certainly have a ways to go. It's uh, you know, 50, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, like I said, this is about halfway. Though there's probably still another, if I had to guess, somewhere between 20 and 40 corrections to be made. So I may just stop the episode if, uh, if it looks like it's going to go on and on and on. Or I may just record the whole thing. Let's see. Okay, we're in alignment now in 15, 42, 44, 47. It's looking good through 49, 52, 54, and then through the end, it looks okay. Looks like we're done with 1 Corinthians. Now we're on to 2 Corinthians. That looks good. Okay, now we got a, got a misalignment here. Kai, tu, zen. Passai. Okay, we have another pass. Passai gar. Okay, this is one where actually both are misaligning. So the XML is different from both the transcription and the Bibleworks Greek morphology here. So this might be a verse that just, so it's in alignment up to verse 8, but then at verse 15 it gets out of alignment and it's a substantial multiple word misalignment. So my guess is this, what this probably means is that um, there's an extra verse, like a verse that Marcus took out of his edition. And I just didn't, I corrected it in the XML, but I didn't correct it in the uh, text and uh, by works Greek morphology data sets. So let's look at that. First, we'll go to the XML. We're in one fifteen. Oh, that's chapter three. Second Corinthians one fifteen. Okay, and let's go to his the source itself, right? Let's go ad fontes back to the original source, the basis. Second Corinthians. Yeah, two Corinthians one. Wow, okay, eight, eight is gone. Oh, 15, 16, 17. Wow, okay, something's really amiss here. Okay, well, I'm going to sign off for this episode and uh, do a deep dive into this because this, this is a bigger problem. Peace out.